A vast number of scholars, among others, have described the Stalin era as repressive and totalitarian, among other diminishing adjectives, ignoring the Soviet Union's adamant struggle to impose and maintain a true social, political, and economic equality to the citizens of the USSR. Women in the USSR, for example, saw an assortment of rights and liberties that were nowhere near full implementation in such nations as the United States during the same time period. In the Soviet state, women have the same rights and privileges as men in all social and political matters, in respect to property rights and in respect to equal pay for equal work. The amount of women holding positions within the Soviet government or who were able to participate in the electoral process was extensively more so than the vast majority of other governments at the time. According to the Soviet Union Information Bureau, and I quote, in the elections of 1927 for the rural Soviets, 6,500,000 women took part. At the elections, 146,251 women were elected to the rural Soviets, or 11.3% of the total number of delegates elected. In addition, it must be noted that, and I quote once more, in October of 1927, women formed 12.8% of the membership of the Communist Party and 21.4% of the League of Communist Youth. Girls numbered 41.7% of the pioneers, which was uh, basically the equivalent to the boy and the Girl Scouts, which was girls and boys from ages 8 to 16. The racial segregation and systematic discrimination that has plagued the United States for so long was found almost nowhere in the Soviet Union, a testament to the dedication of the Soviet government to the working class and oppressed peoples. Paul Robeson, a famous African-American actor and singer of the early to mid-20th century, embarked on a trip to Europe and the Soviet Union in 1949 on what was essentially a musical and speaking tour. Upon his return home from the Soviet Union, Robeson would be questioned by the McCarthyist forces of the United States government some years later. During his testimony, Robeson would reference the equal status of all people in the Soviet Union, and I quote from the, um, from the well-known piece, You Are the Un-Americans. In Russia, I felt for the first time like a full human being. No color prejudice like in Mississippi. No color prejudice like in Washington. It was the first time I felt like a human being. Despite such displays and testaments of civil liberties, Stalin and the government of the Soviet Union have more often than not been accused of anti-Semitism. This accusation is ignorant of the fact that display of, advocating for, and support for anti-Semitism and anti-Semitic behavior in the Soviet Union was illegal. Stalin dismissed anti-Semitism as an advantage to the exploiters as a lightning conductor that deflects the blows aimed by the working people at capitalism. In the same dismissal, Stalin references the fact that anti-Semitism is a punishable offense in the Soviet Union and that, and I quote, active anti-Semites are liable to the death penalty. This is further cemented through Soviet law in 1936, wherein it was established that, and I quote, equality of rights of citizens of the USSR, irrespective of their nationality or race, in all spheres of economic, state, cultural, social, and political life is an indefeasible law. And furthermore, that any direct or indirect restriction of the rights of, or conversely, any establishment of direct or indirect privileges for citizens on account of their race or nationality, as well as any advocacy of racial or national exclusiveness or hatred and contempt is punishable by law.